Has this ever happened to you? You've been visiting Grand Teton National Park or Yellowstone, and you have a blurry picture, maybe even a great picture of a grizzly bear, and you don't know which one it is, and you wanna to try to figure it out. In this video, we're gonna talk about the tips and the tricks that I use as a professional wildlife guide in both of these parks to help you tell the difference on which bear it could be and how to start eliminating possible suspects and how to get onto the right answer so that when you go home, you can brag to all your friends that you saw Grizzly Bear 791. Let's get into it. Well, gang, if you're new to the channel, my name is Bo Weldon. I am a passionate and professional wildlife guide based right here in Windy, Wyoming, specifically Jackson Hole. And in this video, we're gonna break down a, a couple different tactics that I use as a guide in this area to make sure that I am identifying the right bear based on the few characteristics that I can get into. Bears on the whole can be a little bit harder to identify as compared to some other animals out here. They don't have antlers like bull moose, like elk, like deer, and they don't have the same coat variation that a lot of our gray wolves or even some of our foxes might have. Put it coyotes in that category as, as well. So when it comes to bears, there's a couple big things that we can be on the lookout for. The first thing that I look for is territory. Where am I? Now, a lot of this might come from years and years of knowing which bears show up in different places, but there is a ton of information on the internet, both published from the Park Service, but also from blogs, Instagram pages, YouTube pages, all these other accounts that will help identify where certain bears are in both of these parks. So if you're not doing that already, I highly recommend you go onto some of these Facebook groups, start reading some of these reports, and getting to know, if you're really curious about this stuff, where certain bears might live. So let's break down an example and I'll include some footage as well. A lot of people are familiar with this grizzly bear that used to live out here, grizzly bear 399 in the Tetons. A world renowned bear, I was very lucky to see her several different times over the years while I was guiding. Now Grand Teton is her home. She has a big home and she is a grizzly bear who is known to have traveled lots of different paths up and down this entire valley. We're talking 15 miles north of me and 40 miles south of me but she just stays in the Tetons. She doesn't go to Yellowstone. So during her infamy, people would say to me in Yellowstone, we just saw 399 at Tower Junction, or we just saw 399 at uh, the Canyon or Old Faithful. Turns out she doesn't travel that far. So just by territory, you can start to break down who would be the likely suspects. For example, there is a grizzly bear, 815, known as the Barrel Springs Sow, or the Barrel Sow. And she hangs out in, you guessed it, near Barrel Springs, which is kind of on the west side of Yellowstone National Park, but she has a big territory. So people have seen her all the way up towards Mammoth area, and then you know all the way as far south as like the Gibbon Meadows. So she moves around. But but again, if I see a bear, specifically a sow, in that western chunk of the park, that might help identify that could be this bear. Doesn't mean that's the only bear in that area, but it could be one of the likely suspects. So by territory, you break that down, you start reading some of these reports, you chat to some people, you follow some Instagram and some YouTube pages, and you can kind of start drawing little maps of 926 lives over here, and 863 lives over there, and 791 lives over there, and kind of start breaking down who could it be based on the territory. Okay, number two. This one I refer to as bling, or what are they wearing? So a lot of these bears, that are recognizable, that are identifiable, are easier to identify because they have some sort of human piece of equipment on them. So when I'm in these categories, we're talking about research collars and then specifically ear tags. So the absence or presence of a research collar can actually help you identify, I know that 1063 was given a collar two years ago. So. We could be given the point where 1063 doesn't have that research collar. Here's a more recent example. There's a bear who lives out here, bear 1063. She is the daughter of bear 793, who some people have called Blondie. That's 793, that's her mom. 1063 was given a research collar about three years ago. So for about two and a change years, 1063 wore a collar. She was also given at that same time red ear tags. So if I see a grizzly bear in the northern part of Teton, where 1063 typically likes to hang out, 
which probably no coincidence is where her mom liked to hang out a lot as well, then I know, okay, this is probably gonna be 1063. I'm seeing a collared bear and I can see maybe the flint little edge of a red ear tag. That's gonna give me some suspicion. Now it can be confusing because a lot of these bear collars, almost all of them really, are designed to break off the animal. So when I first saw 1063, Without the collar, I was confused, but I broke it down to, wait, I do see red ear tags and she's in that same area. That's probably 1063. So the bling or what they're wearing can help at least start the process of who isn't this bear, because then you have a record of who it might be. The third tip that I use, oh, actually gang, before I get there, go ahead and hit that uh, like and subscribe button. That helps the channel. I like making this long form content versus trying to short and sweet trending audio, dramatic, sh ah, look at it fast, Instagram. I mean, I do like some of that, let's be honest. But I also like this kind of content too, because it makes it feel like we're maybe coming on a tour, it's a little more relationship-based, so hit that like and subscribe button, and then here it is, number three. So the third tactic is specifically with female bears. Now, male bears can be a lot harder to identify. So for example, here in the Tetons, there's a big male bear that for years, everyone has been calling him Bruno. And it feels like whenever there's a male bear in any sort of case, any sort of shot, then it's, oh, it's gotta be Bruno. I think that there are way more male bears than we actually know about in this area. Talking to friends who are on the bear team, they kind of slowly nod their head yes. They're not gonna give me details. Some of that should be, I believe, classified or just restricted information. So with female bears, you have a little bit of a trick, a little bit of a cheat code, if you will. With female bears, if you have your notes lined up, you can actually tell which bear is which based on the number of the cubs that are with that bear and the age of those cubs. So for example, there's a grizzly bear who lives out here. She is the daughter of the very famous grizzly bear, 399 and her research number, because she's been collared, not all these bears have numbers unless they've been collared. A few years ago, she gave birth in 2022 to three koi. I use that acronym a lot and I need to break it down what that means. Koi is an acronym and it means cub of the year. Okay, so those are brand newbies. When she gave birth to her koi in 2022, we knew that if we saw a bear hopefully in the spring of 2023 with three cubs, assuming that all three cubs survived, that that could be probably 610. Now 610 was collared so many years ago that she doesn't have a collar anymore, so we can't go based off of that. But if we saw a grizzly bear in the Tetons with three cubs, based on the number of bears that are a little bit known that year, she was the only bear that had three cubs. So. Mama bear, one, two, three cubs, it's probably gonna be 610. As you kind of keep track of that, then you can get into, for example, another grizzly bear that had three cubs again last year, 2024, the same year that 610 kicked out her three adult cubs, this other bear, 1063, introduced three cubs to the world. Her first time actually ever being a mother, she had three different cubs. And spoiler alert, she kept them all alive. So we're hoping that she's out there right now stirring around in a den with three cubs. But this year, because we know that 1063 had koi, cubs of the year again, that this year they'll be yearlings. So they'll be a little bit bigger. And then next year, they'll be second year olds. And then she will kick them from her care. So keeping track of the mothers and how many cubs they have and the age of the cubs will help identify who it might be. In the spring, when you have all these reports circulating around and all the rumors are flying on who saw the first bear and where it was and how old it looked and all the things, you get a lot of follow-up questions on any cubs, how many, how old, because then you can kind of start crossing off the list of where those cubs might be in their age development and that helps identify which mama bear it could be. Okay team, I said I would give you some bonus tips on where to find these grizzly bears. So a couple ways to think about this is think about what do bears like to eat? I know it sounds funny, but a way to a bear's heart, a way to a bear's feet and where they're standing is through their stomachs. 
So if you think about what grizzly bears tend to eat, then you will find a lot of animals. And guess what, P.S., that's how you find a lot of animals in general, is just think about what they eat. So with grizzly bears in particular, what I'm looking for are food sources. So, for example, one of the reasons why 399 was so prolifically found up in the Pilgrim Creek area in June, because there are a couple different factors. Number one is you have wildflowers and bulbs and all these things getting started to grow. So a very common uh, food source for grizzly bears would be uh, arrowleaf balsam root. And it kind of looks like a little sunflower. And they grow up and they have these little bulbs, these little tubers in the bottom of them. And those are a great food resource for grizzly bears. So if you can kind of track down, where do those flowers like to grow? Like, hey, they like to grow over here. Those bulbs are developing right around this time. So we might find grizzly bears in that area. The other reason, 1063, 399 and these other bears like to be in this kind of northern Teton part. One is that it's away from people. Two is that there are elk migrating through that area, right? So elk are coming off the National Elk Refuge. They're moving their way north and they like to go to a very common spot right around what's called Willow Flats. There are so many pictures online of 399 at Willow Flats and that's because state of Wyoming right now estimates that per bear Grizzly bears eat somewhere between like 18 to 21 elk calves per spring per bear. So let's think about elk calving because that's a big food source for grizzly bears in the spring. Elk like to stash their little calves right when they're born. So mom will give birth. She'll drop off that little calf in a willow thicket, somewhere in deep brush, sagebrush even, and then she will clean them up, leave, and only come back every couple of hours to make sure that that little calf is doing just fine. Grizzly bears know that. They've been on the landscape the same amount of time that elk have. So if you can figure out, hey, where do elk like to give birth? Maybe a place like Willow Flats. That's gonna be where you're gonna lead bears into that area and maybe you're gonna walk home with some really great moments watching grizzly bears. So getting the last one that I don't tend to depend so much on, especially because bear coat colorations are really hard to tell, but coat coloration or scars or unique characteristics. So for example, there's a grizzly bear that actually lives outside of Grand Teton National Park. I've only seen her twice and she only has three feet. So she has four legs, but she is actually missing, I believe it's her right front leg or her right front wrist. It was actually very unfortunately caught in a trap. She still has cubs. She's still a great mother. She's still a grizzly bear. She's still a badass out here being a bear. Okay, so another example is there's a big male bear up in Yellowstone. I've only seen him once, but he is missing a finger. He's missing a toe on one side. I just saw a picture just today from a very well-known photographer up in Yellowstone who actually works up there. And there was a grizzly bear that she saw that is missing his left eye. And it actually looks as though it's kind of, there's like ooze and fresh liquid coming out of there. So something like that, those little small characteristics, in addition to that coat color, that can be really hard to, to rely on though. Cause again, we talked about uh, bears don't have the same amount of coat coloration as wolves do. Using that can also help you identify which bear could it be. So team, at the end of the day, yes, it's really cool to know like which bear is which because you can kind of think about the history of that bear. And I think it helps us like re relate and emote to a lot of these different bears, knowing their stories, knowing the trials and tribulations that these mother bears or these male bears have been through in their day. But I also have to throw this in there, that seeing a grizzly bear is freaking amazing. And being able to see one in the wild and not in the zoo or not in any sort of like enclosure just adds a level of power that's really hard to match. So yes, take the time, get the binos, get the scope, get the camera, whatever you got going on to maybe get the photo, but then put down the whatever lens you're looking through if they're close enough and just like watch them. Uh, it's such a powerful experience to share time with these big animals. So, you know, it's okay to get the photo. I get it. I've been doing it for a long time. I'm pretty spoiled, but just have that moment for yourself. Download that here, you know, not, not necessarily onto, a, onto your memory card. Use, use the original memory card so that you can take that memory home because not a lot of people have been able to say that they've shared space safely uh, with a grizzly bear in such a ridiculously beautiful spot. 
So those are my tips. That's my suggestion. Gang, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I really appreciate the support. Um, if you have any questions on like another, other ways to find bears, other content that you want to see me produce, um, I love talking about this stuff. I literally talk for a living, talking all about the natural history and the flora and the fauna and all the, all the things that make this place special. So shoot them down in the comments. And other than that, I, I think I'm going to go try to find a grizzly bear. All right. Stay golden.